Good evening, everyone. Welcome to District 63's Mentor Mondays. I am your host, Stephen Shaner. I'm curious, by show of hands, how many of you have participated in a speech craft in the past? Okay, I see quite a few hands, excellent. Well, Toastmasters has renewed the speech craft, speech craft program. Tonight, we're going to learn more about that new program. Please welcome our first speaker of the evening, she is our district director, Stacy Thomas. Thank you, Stephen, and welcome to everyone. I'm glad you attended Speechcraft tonight, and I was so happy to see that many Toastmasters have participated in Speechcraft in the past, whether as a Speechcraft student or a coordinator or even a speaker. Don, could you go to the next slide, please? For those of you who aren't familiar with Speechcraft, Speechcraft is kind of Toastmasters on steroids. Think of it this way. If we join Toastmasters and we go every week or two weeks and we exercise our speaking muscles, Toastmasters would be, excuse me, Speechcraft would be like Toastmasters boot camp. For four, six, or eight week sessions, we would train non-Toastmasters in speaking and leadership skills. Next slide, Don. So what does a attendee to Speechcraft get out of it? Well, first of all, it helps them with their speaking skills. A lot of the speech crafters, which is what we call a student in Speechcraft, come because they may have an imminent presentation coming up. They may have a presentation at work, or they may be speaking at a wedding or a funeral or a retirement, and they're really nervous about it. Some of them come because they've heard of Toastmasters, but they don't really want to commit to a long-term membership. They just want to see what it's like. But for six or eight weeks, they can do that. So they'll come to a speech craft instead. If they come to speech craft, they will, of course, be in a positive and supportive environment, as all Toastmasters are. And they'll receive credit should they join Toastmasters after their speech craft session. Depending on how long the session, the, the, toast, the uh, speech craft session is, they can get credit for two speeches, three speeches, perhaps a whole level and then some additional speeches as well, depending on how many speeches we can fit in. Next slide, please. So what does the Toastmasters who participate in Speechcraft get out of it? Well, coordinating Speechcraft is on your list to get a DTM. If you'll notice, level, level one, level you got two paths right at the bottom. Right above that, it says club sponsor or Speechcraft or youth leadership program. It's one of the requirements that you can use to meet your DTM. Next slide. Now we want to talk about the virtual Toastmasters, excuse me, the virtual speech craft that Toastmasters has just listed. And I want to turn the podium over to Don Biddick. Don? Thank you so much, Stacy. Appreciate that. Not really much to say on this screen. These are just different flyers, different forms that will be used throughout the Speechcraft program. I will get into a little bit more detail on some of these in a later slide. So I will continue on to this slide. Once you sign up for a Speechcraft session through Toastmasters International, you will get a confirmation number. Now this confirmation number is needed for when you start setting up your different classes, your sessions, et cetera, et cetera. So hold on to that confirmation as you progress through the program. Once you sign in to the base camp of Speechcraft in Toastmasters, you will receive this initial screen. You simply need to just click on the go to go to my Speechcraft Learning to get started. Once you're in the Speechcraft Online program, you choose a club. And in our case, Stacy and Dean and I are fortunate enough to represent the Franklin Toastmasters Club for the Speechcraft program. And then here's where you use that order number. You'll need that to continue progressing to get signed up in the Speechcraft program. You'll need to sign up the coordinator or coordinators 
for the Speechcraft program at this point. The event details, and this is, this is very important. Uh, you want to give your event a name, but also give it dates and locations. And that will help your speech crafters, those who are participating in the program, some dates and times that they can put into their calendars and they can show up on time, hopefully early to these meetings. For us right now, what we're doing is we're doing the online speech craft program virtually through, it's a similar, tool to Zoom. It's called Blue Jeans. And I won't get too much into that because that is Dean's bailiwick, if you will. It is through his organization, SME. And it's much like Zoom. So there's a little bit of a lear learning curve for Stacy and I in using Blue Jeans, but very similar concepts up to Zoom. So it wasn't a steep learning curve for us. Provide attendee price. I watched a video on Speechcraft and they talked about charging speech crafters for the program. And I won't get into that too much, but the cost of the program can be done in different ways. Some of the ways you can do it is to have them pay for it. And included in that is their initial membership for Toastmasters, should they continue in Toastmasters afterward. And some of these could be used for resources, et cetera, et cetera. But we won't get into the details of this tonight because we're really just providing an overview of the online speechcraft program. And then of course, you'd need to agree to the terms and conditions of Toastmasters speechcraft through Toastmasters International. And then you submit your course and you're all set to get started. That's just the initial, that's kind of like, in my opinion, like filling out the intent to charter for a club, you fill out this intent to have a speech craft program, if you will. Once you've done that, now you can enter the information of the people who are going to participate in the speech craft program. In our speech craft program that we are doing right now, Dean and Stacy and I each have five people in what we call our group, if you will. Each coordinator, can have, I believe, and Stacey, you can correct me if I'm wrong, each speech craft coordinator can have up to five people in their, in their group. You can see Dean's as an example on the screen here. And we have boxed out, if you will, the last names of the people who are participating to protect the innocent, if you will. Once you send them an initial welcome email, then they need to go into the system and accept to be part of this program. And you can see over to the right, four of the participants at this time went ahead and clicked and registered to that email that was sent out by the system uh, through Dean. And then the last person there, it's pending registration. That person still needed at the time to go out and, and accept the uh, participation in the uh, program. So you can see this as a coordinator. You can see your meeting ID, the coordinator's name, the club, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Dean's contact information, and then information about the five speech crafters in his group, if you will. Then you can continue. Welcome to Speechcraft, and I'll move on from this screen. Not much really to share here. Don, can I uh, interject real quick here? Abs absolutely. You want me to go back I, a screen? Uh, if you don't mind, that's fine. The Or one more. Okay. I did want to clarify, it is not me who sends out an email. You what you do is you're filling out the student's name. So you sign up their name and their email address. Then Toastmasters takes those names and emails, much like you do with the normal registration. When you join Toastmasters, you get an introductory email saying, welcome to Speechcraft. Go to this link, enter in your data, your personal information as it as it normally would, you know, your address and where you want your confirmation that you've completed it to go to, whether it's to your boss or to somebody you work with or somebody like that. So there's a few different things that do occur, but it is not specifically because I do it or because you would do it. It's because we just filled that in. Then that's where the Toastmaster system starts to take over. I just wanted to clarify that. No, thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, so as coordinators, we put the information in, the names of the participants and their email addresses, et cetera, et cetera, then the system does put that out. 
However, I did get a little hit of myself. What we did as coordinators as well is we emailed the participants as well to say, hey, look for this email from the Speechcraft base camp through Toastmasters and accept it and get into the system, start filling it out, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of a you know, two-step process, maybe, if you will. You don't have to send that email to them, but we did just out of courtesy. Okay, once you're in uh, the Speechcraft program online, there are a lot of options that you can choose here. You've got a, an introduction box there, really in, included in that. You've got a, a coordinator's guide, if you will, where you can go through there and learn about different things as a coordinator. Planning, it's where you plan your sessions basically through the coordinators. Uh, you can plan your sessions. Uh, will it be, you know, four, six, eight week kind of thing? Uh, what will the agendas look like, education sessions? And, and this is all included in all these boxes here. Uh, session resources, agendas, outlines, and evaluations. And this is where it's really, really helpful uh, as a coordinator because there are so many things within this section on this screen here, the session resources. It has educational sessions that what we're doing actually as coordinators, we're asking other people in the district to join us during our speech craft formal meetings, if you will, to give different educational sessions to our speech crafters. Body language. Uh, we had that last week, I believe, from Dory Nolan. Uh, they, she, she talked about body language to our speech crafters. You've got an icebreaker. Uh, we'll have, we had someone come in and talk about how to prepare an icebreaker speech. You've got persuasive speaking, powerful words, uh, evaluation and feedback. A lot of the things that we would learn or we would have learned in our old company communicator manual and a couple other manuals are included in these educational sessions. It's not necessarily, I believe, that you go through all of these educational sessions, but you want to target the educational sessions that will help the speech crafters begin their journey as a communicator and help them with the speeches that you have identified that they will work on during the program. For example, we're having them work on three different uh, or four different um, subjects, if you will, for their speeches. The first one was an icebreaker. So we had someone come in, do that icebreaker educational sessions. We had selecting a topic for the next one, organizing your speech, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the basics that we used to love and hold dear in the company communications manual are in these session resources. You've also got evaluation forms, evaluation forms that you can print off, you can send to your speech crafters, and uh, because they evaluate speeches as well. So it's nice for them to have those forms. We modeled evaluations to them in the first or second session, and they are doing the evaluations after that. So a lot of the things we're sort of uh, learning and showing, and then they are doing after that. So that is a really important box right there in session resources. And I will pause right there to ask Stacy or Dean if they have anything they wanna share about that box right there. I think you'll notice, uh, Don, as you get further into this, this looks and feels a lot like Pathways, and that's intentional. Toastmasters wanted to make all of the speech crafters familiar with Pathways so that if they do join a club after speech craft, they will already be familiar with, with the platform and that will make the learning curve much easier for them. Thank uh, you. I, Go ahead, Dean. I'm sorry. I was going to say, that, yes, that's absolutely right. Stacy, the other part of it is that it's the same company. It's it's through a third party that handles most of the coordination stuff and all the materials, and actually the system itself, the the learning system, is through a third party. And when you actually go there, it's the same company. One very key important thing here, I don't see it on here, but the there is an address if we go back to where you were before, but it, you don't have to do it. It's not a big deal. The email address is speechcraft at, I think it's speechcraft.toastmasters, whereas normally it's toastmasters and then dot to whatever location. This is actually speechcraft.toastmasters. So you're going to speechcraft. And if you do a search, you'll find that the first thing that comes up is Toastmasters and it's the speech craft 
but it is not the speechcraft system. You have to go to speechcraft. So don't be confused when you go and look for this, that it's a little bit more complicated than just typing in Toastmasters and trying to find it under Toastmasters because that's not where it's located. Very good. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Dean. I re really appreciate you guys sharing that about the tie-in to Pathways. One of the things that you see on the screen here, and I will point you down to the bottom right, the Speechcraft dashboards. I really like that dashboard as a coordinator because once a speech crafter completes a speech, if you will, you'll go over to the left and do a speech validation. And then that will show up on the dashboard, on the Speechcraft dashboard, that that participant has completed that speech. And you can keep track of all the participants, where they are in the process, with their assessments, with their speeches, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really nice way to keep up with their progress and to let them keep up with their own progress as well. And then once the, set, the whole program is over, you'll know what can transfer over to Toastmasters actually at that point as well. Um, so you've got the speech validations, you've got the speech craft dashboards, and then there's a feature over here, and I, I, I want to say this with a word of caution. You've got a chat and feedback box there to the bottom left. My suggestion is when you get everyone together with the speech crafters and the coordinators, if you want to just use email to communicate with them, you can. <laughs> but there is a chat and feedback box right here that you can communicate with them as well. I personally found with my group that they weren't using it as much. I would chat, try to chat with them, send them feedback through that option, but they weren't really in there watching that or replying to it. So I found myself using email more than this chat feature, but it is something definitely that is worth exploiting, if you will. And hopefully you can get speech crafters that you can set expectations and you can get speech crafters that will focus in on this because the more you can do in this online process, the better. That way you don't have to go to two or three different places to keep communicating with them. All right, we will continue. All right, and that's just uh, welcome again. Now here's what Stacy mentioned earlier. Uh, you can have different lengths of sessions. What I'm finding with the Speechcraft program that we're working on right now is doing the six week session, we're really only having time for about five or three speeches for each participant, if you will. And that's breaking them into groups of five uh, that we're really only having them uh, time to do two or three speeches. That's nice. That's a really, really good start. And hopefully they will catch the bug, if you will, uh, of Toastmasters and join afterward. I know I've done speechcraft programs in the past where we've gone 10, 12 weeks at a time uh, just to really get them more involved and more involved with leading the meetings, learning those leadership roles, et cetera, et cetera. We really haven't asked them to be a Toastmaster quite yet or general evaluator, but the more sessions that you have, the more opportunities you can have with them doing leadership type opportunities as well. So that's something to think about when you set up your speech craft program. Do you just want them to focus on speaking, giving speeches, maybe evaluating? A shorter session makes more sense. But if you want to actually get into more leadership opportunities, maybe a longer program might make more sense as well. And in the uh, online tool here, they have sample agendas, sample agendas and outlines for the program. Uh, for each of these sessions as well, which makes it really nice. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, it's out there. It's available to you. You can customize it, obviously. You can tweak it, et cetera. So I know, I know Stacy's been doing a lot of tweaking for us, and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, so let me continue to the next screen here. Okay, and we have already talked about that. We've talked about tutorials and resources. Here are the... Uh, the boxes you would click on for sample agendas for different lengths of sessions. And then you've got the educational sessions that I talked about earlier here. You got body language, focal variety down below, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I really like this page here because you can really define and customize what you want to present to your speech crafters during the program. So I really like this page here. 
And uh, much like uh, in Pathways, uh, you can have feedback to your speech crafters where you can present them with uh, a badge, if you will. I don't know how many of you use the badge feature in Pathways uh, to send them to uh, people who speak, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also do that here in the, in the speech craft session. Unfortunately, I have not taken advantage of that yet in the first three sessions that we've had. And I'd like to ask Dean or Stacy if you guys have done this and have you found it helpful? I have not used this feature either, Don. As a matter of fact, I find out that most of the speech crafters go here, just like in Toastmasters. Most of us go to Pathways to get the materials we need to go off and do what we want to do outside of Pathways. And I don't really go back to look at badges. And I think they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Dean, have you seen anything different? I have sent a few badges. Oh. The, the problem is, much like the other communication aspect within Pathways and with Speechcraft, is that you have to know it's there. You have to know to go look for it. And that's a problem, I think. I don't know whether that's something down the road or what, but there's no mechanism to trigger a message to the individual. So they have to know to go look for it to see if they have a badge. Same as like you were talking about emailing them uh, through this system. When you message them through that system, there's nothing on their end that says, hey, yeah. you got a message, go look. Same with the badges. But there, I have sent them, but I've never gotten any response <laughs> because they don't know they're there. Right, right. And uh, great point, Dean and Stacy. And I will share with everybody on this Zoom call that we are, if you will, maybe one of the beta testers, not by definition, not a formal definition of a beta tester, but we are one of the first in the region to do this online speech craft program. And World Headquarters is expecting a lot of feedback from the initial users of the speech craft program online. They know it's not perfect. Uh, they've developed a very nice system, but they do want feedback. So once Stacy and Dean and I have completed this program, well, we've been making notes along the way, things that we find frustrating, things that are really good, things that we would like to see them add, and we'll be passing that on to World Headquarters as well. Dean, did you want to add to that? I would say that, first of all, that's in the world. There's only yeah. been one in the world that's completed. Last I checked with World Headquarters, there's only one club or group that has completed speech craft so far. So yeah. we are beta <laughs> testing for the world. Very good. I knew, I knew we were one of the first, but I didn't realize we were one of the first in the world. So thank you. <laughs> okay. And here's a, um, I guess, speech craft coordinator, final ch checklist, if you will. Uh, these are, these are things as a coordinator uh, that you will work on once you've completed the, um, the program. And I won't get into this just yet. Here's just a checklist that is made available to us. We have not completed our program yet. So I know I personally have not gone through these checklist items just yet. So I will hold off talking about them, but please know that at the end of the program, there are some things that you can continue to do to wrap things up for the speech crafters. And look at that bottom one there. Talk about recognition. We can print certificates for the uh, speech crafters, which uh, hopefully they will appreciate. Uh, I know a lot of Toastmasters appreciate getting recognition, um, you know, certificates, whatever. But, uh, you, know, you know, much like online badges, online badges are nice, but if you don't know they're there, you don't see them. But this is something that you can actually like send them or give to them, which is nice. Um, again, I, I wasn't going to talk about this a whole lot, but Stacy or Dean, did you want to share anything about this? I know we're not there yet, but. Well, we have actually gone in as they give speeches and yes. check each just check that first speech. For instance, they did their icebreakers. We went in and checked their icebreakers complete. That not only gives them credit within Speechcraft, but should they join, that will also give them credit in Pathways as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we are keeping up with their speeches. So when they do give speeches, we give them credit for those speeches. But then at the end, we have to give them like final credit, if you will. 
at this point, we will talk about other resources and what a nice picture there, a toolbox. Stacy or Dean, I don't know who created that, but I think that's very appropriate for what's about to come. So everybody, I would like to stop sharing at this point. And then I would like to introduce the top dog, the main coordinator for the Speechcraft session. And he may tell us a little bit about how he and his organization are putting this on, but he's also going to talk about another resource or two to this group on Zoom. So please help me welcome Dean Phillips. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate it. I could not have done it without both of them and all of the volunteers. I think that's an important aspect. When we talk about this, that is the most critical element. All this other stuff, it's great having the tools, it's great having the information, but to do it without volunteers, is it would be horrible. It would truly be horrible to try and do this as one person trying to run a speech craft. You need the volunteers and you need about a dozen or so volunteers to do this and to do it right. Let me uh, kind of share my screen here and I'll show you what how the organization of this came together because that's an important part of this was the fact that we started with the idea that we wanted to do this. I am the I'm on the board of directors for SME. And as such, the question came up with what is one of the necessities that that is needed the most by people who are engineers. Well, soft skills was the number one thing that came up. Where better to go for soft skill training than us, Toastmasters? As such, we put out a just a very brief, hey, are you interested? And we got 70 replies of people that were interested. From there, we narrowed it down to 15 people in each one of us coordinators, Don, Stacy, and myself, each took five of these students. Well, what did we do? First thing we had to do was come up with a plan, organize week to week what we were going to do. You have to have an idea of what is this going to be? So we set out a timing list, who's going to be our volunteers, and then what their roles were. Trello is what we use here. I just wanted to not, Trello's not paying me any money yet but I may try to go and leverage them to offer a donation to Toastmasters. <laughs> but we had to come up with an idea here of, well, what is it? What are we trying to do? Well, we broke it down into each one of our groups. Stacy had the pink group, Don had the blue group, I had the gray group. Each one of these groups here now were had students and volunteers. The volunteers took on all different numbers of roles. You have to have somebody that can do evaluations the first week for the students that are giving their icebreakers. Then you have to have somebody that can do, of course, timing, can do accounting, can do grammarian, these types of roles that you have in our regular meetings. Well, you have to do them here in, in our speech crafter training. And when you break this up into three groups, the reason you, we broke it up in three groups was because in an hour or an hour and a half to try and get 15 people to do an icebreaker on one week is, is insane. It would be crazy to try and get them to do it, plus give them an evaluation. It, we'd have been there for three, four or five hours to try and do that. So we had a breakout where each one of these groups, is it's still 45 minutes when we do these, these breakout sessions are still 45 minutes. So that's important aspect to understand that we're, we're doing this within this time frame, and we're doing this in these breakout sessions, but that also requires more volunteers. And that's a bigger challenge. But to our credit, we've had some really great volunteers that have stepped up and I wanna thank them. Great job by everybody. We have our, our speech crafters broken up into these different groups. And then by availability, we put down who could help us, who was able to step up on the volunteer side. Now, some of the volunteers gave a session. Since there's eight sessions, whether you do it over four weeks or you do it over eight weeks, there are eight topics you're supposed to cover during this. Well, those eight topics, if you're gonna do it 
you can do it like we did, which was we front loaded everything. So we had four sessions right on the front side to cover the materials. Then each week we have one session. So that breaks down into actually five weeks technically. And each week we have a session, what happens during that session, who's going to do what and at what time. And then we have a list here of things we wanted to do and lessons learned, things that we wish we would have done here. Uh, understand that, first of all, when you pay for these, one of the challenges is to make sure that you fill this group up because when there's you pay $50 for five students, roughly. Now, if you only have two students, you still pay $50. If you only have one student, you still pay $50. You have five students, you still pay $50. And that means you can get it as cheap as $10 per student. But if you get six students, it's $100 because you're now into the next five. So understand that that is a challenge of what this, this program and how it's bundled. So just be aware of how that bundle is set up. Uh, the other areas that we've done when we've gone through this, we did have some challenges of people understanding. Now that we've had experience with doing, uh, doing our, our Toastmasters Pathways, Imagine thinking back to when you first started on Pathways and what a challenge it was. I, I say that because one of the problems is, is that going through this electronic version has its own challenges and its own problems. Because of that, we wind up with the same kinds of things that we had of navigation getting them from page to page to page. It's not in necessarily intuitive that says, start here, even though there is something on there that says first lesson, or I forget what it actually says on the other side, because I can't see, that is another challenge is that as a speech craft coordinator, I can't see what the students see. I, I am only assuming it looks similar to mine because I'm not a student. I've never run through their program. I don't know what it looks like specifically, but I've been told and looking at the video that is out there, there are two videos. I highly recommend everybody watching. One is for the coordinators. One is for the students. Watch them both. And on the student video, I can see that it looks very similar to ours. There's a couple different sections that are not there, but understand that you run into the same electronic challenges. How do I get there? Where's this page? What do I do after this? What's telling me that I have to do my next project? Now, we could talk about it when we go into our speech craft meetings and, or sessions. We can talk about, hey, here's what you got to do next. But it's a little bit different when they get in there and they have to start navigating and they have to find the next lesson. You know, if you remember how the books are, you just, all you do is you flip to the next page. That's how you know you're in the next section. You flip to the next page. But what it isn't is it doesn't do, it's not like that when you go into this. You have to learn where everything is and know what the next session is. So that's been a little bit more of a challenge, I think. Uh, Stacy and Don, uh, other challenges that you think that we've had to adapt to and learn from? I would say switching over from Zoom, which we're all used to, to Blue Jeans, which we are not familiar with, was a bit of a challenge. There's some differences there that we weren't prepared to address, but so far it's worked out pretty well. It's very similar, but that was a challenge. Uh, but I'll tell you, Dean, I really have enjoyed the online speechcraft session, uh, being able to, first of all, get re recruit volunteers to help us from all over the district has been fantastic. Ordinarily, if you do a speech craft, you might do it through your club and where you get your volunteers is from your club. So sometimes it's hard to get enough speakers to come and volunteer to do educational sessions or even speeches, uh, demonstration speeches for you. So being able to recruit from the district has been wonderful. And then also being able to break into different breakout sessions for each group. I really like that. What we did is we set up three different rooms we break our speech crafters, me, Don, and Dean each take a room, and also our volunteers are broken into the various rooms. 
And so they help us out in those rooms by evaluating or filling other roles. That also gives our speech crafters a, a huge view of a lot of different people. So for instance, every week we have a different Toastmaster so that they can see there's not just one way to do Toastmaster. Everybody does it a little differently. And I think that has been beneficial for our students as well. So those are some of the things that I've really enjoyed doing this speech craft session. Plus, I think for us, it's a benefit. Each of us who serves as a coordinator can get credit for speech craft, which leads toward your DTM. In the past, only one person got credit for speech craft. Don, how about you? Thank you, Stacy and Dean. I totally agree. This has been a wonderful experience so far. The only challenge that I personally have seen is when we start a speech craft session, we're all together. We're all together, all 15 speech crafters, all whatever, 10 or 12, 15 volunteers. We are all together. We start the meeting, et cetera, et cetera. We have uh, the educational session. And then we break into three separate breakout rooms. And Stacy will take her participants in a room. I'll take mine. And Dean will take his. Now, here's where the challenge comes in. Let's say that Stacy has five people and that's the max, five people show up to give speeches, Dean has three and I have one. So the challenge is how do we all get back together back in the main room to continue with our main meeting, do table topics, wrap up the meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So we've had a little bit of a timing issue getting everyone back into the main room together. Now it hasn't caused, in my opinion, a terrible problem. Uh, it's just, just a challenge, something that um, is probably going to happen the way we are doing this session right here. Uh, I mean, I love the way we're doing it. I think it's the best way for timing sake, but maybe something to get everyone back in the main room together closer in time uh, might be something to explore. But uh, to, to this point, I don't know how we would overcome that, to be honest. Um, so Dean, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, I, I echo both of those things. The volunteers, uh, in fact, we have several of them on here. Paul's on here, Sonia, Nick, and uh, Dory are all on here. And I want to thank them especially for the roles that they've played with volunteering to be part of this venture. <laughs> I can only imagine that uh, this is how the early expeditions went. Okay, we're just heading this way. That's all we know. We're heading this way. And, <laughs> and then, so what? We get off course? Well, then that's the way we're going now. It, it has been pretty fun, though. I, I think everybody's enjoyed it. The great thing has been the learning experience because everybody that's been involved are going to be the leaders moving forward because our district, as we start to unfold this and rush it out to everybody else, everybody is going to have to learn from each other. That's unfortunately, we have a large group of volunteers that are going to be able to contribute and let people know how this is done. Mary Mixon, who is one of our most experienced uh, speech crafters, well, she's on, involved in this and she wanted to be involved in it because she knows that this is going to be a change. This is something we're all going to have to learn from. Whether we like it or not, whether you don't like it or not, it doesn't matter. This is what, what it is. And it's a great tool. So far, I, having never done the original, I can't say what the other one looked like, but this has been have its own little idiosyncrasies. But I do find that it is very much like pathways and that's good and bad. There's a lot of great tools. And if you're going to convert over to pathways and you're going to join a Toastmasters, this will be beneficial to all of this, all of the students, all of those speech crafters will take this information and it will run so much smoother when they get into pathways because they, it will be laid out very similar when they go in there. So I, I think that's a really a uh, good experience for them to that will carry over an experience. Their time will be saved down the road. Plus, if you think about it, how many, just looking around the room here, how many of us have given three speeches in five meetings? One, two, three, four. Few of us have. It's 
that's a lot. Think about that. If you just started, how many of us did that when you first started your first four weeks, you went out and did three or four speeches. This is a lot. This is a lot for them to do. And it's an incredible experience to watch how far these students are progressing in this very short window of time. Don or, or Stacy, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, I agree, Dean. It has been absolutely fantastic just to watch each of the speech crafters from week to week, because you can see a difference. We do it every two weeks, so you can see a difference in those two-week sessions. You can already tell that they have progressed. Some of them have absolutely blown me away on day one. The first speech a uh, couple of them gave, they used the word of the day, which I can't even do now. I, I mean, it's just, just been fantastic to watch them. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I'll just add one thing to that. I was bragging on one of the participants in my group after last week's meeting because we had two scheduled speakers and they didn't show up in our breakout group. One of the speech crafters volunteered to do an impromptu speech. And I was just, I was blown away, but here's the icing on the cake, if you will. He gave his speech, received a lot of good feedback. I challenged him at the end of our breakout session. I said, you know, we have this, uh, this thing in pathways where you give a speech, you get feedback, and then you give that speech again based on the feedback. And so I challenged him to take the feedback that he got from that session and to give that same speech again at our next meeting. And you know what he said without hesitation? He said, challenge accepted. And I was blown away by that response. So they, they are amazing. But the only other thing I'll say, and I want to say this before we get too far off and leave this call, just a huge shout out to Dean uh, for organizing this and putting this on. I mean, he's a trailblazer for this online speech craft, and he's representing our district well. Yeah, Thank you. And, and for a, a group of engineers, not to insult any engineers, <laughs> but I work with them a lot. They are really doing a fantastic job. And I'll tell you, there is one guy in there who has had an incredible life. Even being in a prisoner of war camp and escaping, I'm telling you, if he becomes a Toastmaster, he can challenge any of our international speech contestants. So you guys better watch out. Yeah, I, I agree. So uh, Suleiman is his name and he is phenomenal. I mean, to have that kind of ex life experience, if you can translate that, boy, that's something that he's got a lot to draw off of for speeches. Uh, it, he's, he's had a phenomenal life and one that's been, uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, an adventure. That would be the only way I could put it is it's been an adventure for him. Um, with that, I'd like to open it up. Any questions that we have from everybody around the district? Well, I have a quick question. So if I'm understanding it correctly, they finish Speechcraft and let's say they do five speeches and they complete level one of Pathways. If they went and joined since Franklin is sponsoring it, like the day they join, technically the VPE could just go ahead and submit their level one. Is that how I'm understanding it works? Without them having to do anything else. Yeah, Don, can you pull up that early slide that had the speech to I think it was in my my section, Don, okay. that shows what they can accomplish at each level. There it is. So this is kind of the the breakdown of what you can accomplish and what you get credit for. Technically, if you can now, none of our students will, will get to seven because we're only doing technically a four-week section, a four-week session with a fifth week that was kind of an introduction. So in four weeks, it would they could only get through four levels would be the best that they could do. But if you were to do this over an eight-week session, it is conceivable that you could get to number seven here and get all that credit. Now that would be done by the VPE if, of the club. Now our goal, I want to, to clarify one thing that we didn't really talk about, which is 
our goal is not to get a whole bunch of new members for Franklin Toastmasters. It's not the goal. The goal is to start a virtual SME club. That is the goal. We have 15 members that are engaged to some extent. And our goal is to get another five plus and start a SME club. That's our goal for this. But that does not mean that has to be your goal. It means that if you're going to have a club and you're going to do speech craft, that's five new members you could easily have for your club. So and I just wanted to clarify that. To answer your question, Kim, yes, if they get four speeches in, they will have achieved level one and they will get credit for level one when they join. The toast, the, the VPE could go in and give them credit and your club would have credit then for a level one completion. Cool. Thank you. That's an right. incredible right. amount of progress <laughs> in a very short period of time. Yeah. And, I have a question. And, well, go ahead, Regina. Okay. Is there any way that I could get that slide? I missed the first few because I couldn't find my passcode to get into the Toastmasters. That slide, because I didn't get, because uh, Tanya Latham and I are planning on doing a speech craft, and I've done a speech craft under the old system. But I'm, if I could get that, because I'm, I'm, I missed how to get it started on the online. So, yeah, uh, Stacy actually put this together. I'm sure she will consider sharing it with everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be glad to send you the slide deck. That'd be and great. Plus, the entire sessions are recorded, therefore available right. on our YouTube channel. Okay, I forgot about that. But That's I would like to, so I have something to, to look back to on that. Thanks for the reminder, Paul. <laughs> great session, too, by the way. Thank you. And, and if I could add one thing to Kim's question real quick. Um, so Kim and I, I know Kim, you and I have talked about this before, how we went to pathways and we lost the basic speeches from the CC manual, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I see two things really coming from this and I don't know how soon we'll see both of them. But like Dean said, the goal for this one is to hopefully start a new club but I can see the Speechcraft program, online program, being used by clubs for new members, if you will. So they go through the Speechcraft program, they learn the basics, and then just transition into pathways at that point. So I almost see maybe another possibility for online Speechcraft as well. Don, I'm glad you mentioned that because any of you who were here for the last Mentor Monday, uh, we had a guest speaker who talked about how to attract new members into your club. You remember that? One of the things that he said, and I'd like to challenge all of our clubs next year, is that they hold a speech craft once a year for their club. He said, it's one of the best tools, and Toastmaster says this as well, it's one of the best tools for attracting new members to your club. So if each club went out and did speech craft at least once a year, you could train your new members that have coming in and attract new members coming in. And guess what? You would have achieved what, at least four level ones right there off the bat, maybe some level twos, depending on how deep you went into speech craft. It would be an excellent tool, not only to recruit members, but also to train your members that are there. So I challenge everyone to try to do it at least once a year. I think it would be great. I love that idea, Stacy. However, there's the $10 per participant factor that most clubs can't handle. Well, that's true. But now what Toastmaster suggests is that you actually charge your speech crafters $10 to participate. So you recover your money by having the Toastmaster pay. Yeah, but you were talking about for the, all the members of your club? If you wanted to train your new members, yes, same thing. You're, you're absolutely right, Paul. If the club couldn't cover it, the individual member would have to pay the $10 to cover it. But if you think about it in much the same as the first or second slide that Stacy had, if you think about this as a boot camp, think about people, anybody here who's a gym membership guy, yeah, I really don't look like a gym membership guy, but what I will say is that if you get a gym membership, that does not release you from having to pay for a boot camp. If you're if you go to the gym, you pay extra to go to most boot camps regardless. And that's what this is. This is an opportunity to jump start your pathways journey. You can move ahead quite fast. And even new members before they join, the first thing you do is you charge them instead of charging them as a new member 
you could charge them the $45 and then they would be jump started all the way through. And then you could apply that $45 then to their, or $55, let's say to their membership. Now you've paid for the course and now you've paid for their first six months of dues at that same time. So when they join, they pay for this, uh, some things that they brought up, they've talked about the most that you're allowed to charge was $190 technically twice a, a, a one year charge for dues. It was the maximum that they said was allowable by Toastmasters. So you could charge as much as $90 if you could get somebody to, to do that. But the, the biggest thing I think is, is reasonable is to say, look, you're a new member. We're going to have our uh, speech craft here in a month. Why don't you and put together four or five new members, or maybe we could even do this as a district. I know they want this to be club-based, but we could even do it as a group, as part of the district that all new members kind of get funneled through this. That way you charge them for the new membership. So that club gets the new membership, but at the same time, that $10 goes for them to join that speech craft and they can jumpstart and move, move ahead pretty quickly. One thing you could do, Paul, is you could get all of your new members to be volunteers to help out with speech craft. So they could give an icebreaker demonstration. They could maybe do an evaluation. They could fill those roles, still get Toastmasters Pathways credit for it and still be learning within the club without necessarily having to pay again to be a Toastmaster, uh, to be a speech craft participant. So that would work as well. Any other questions? Yes, Nick. So I know that um, like part of, clubs are restricted in what they can use club funds for, right? The, like we can't pay for people's dues uh, there, and we can't have scholarships, but could we fund as a prize or a raffle or some kind of giveaway for inviting the most members, like giveaway pathways training? So, you know, like have five available and the five people who bring in the most guests that month or that year would get the, you know, the pathways training, um, of course, you know, you got to find the, you still have to find the Toastmasters to volunteer and, and all that. But I'm going to get some. You mean the speech craft training? Could you do that with speech? Yes. What, is it, what? what did I say? Was it Pathways? Pathways. Oh, the, way, the, way, uh, <laughs> the way speech craft set up is it, it is technically set up for clubs to purchase or right. individual I, members of a club. So, yes, the club could purchase it and I'm assuming use it however they wanted to. You're, you're, you're responsible for attracting your participants. So whether those participants, however you get your participants, you're responsible for them. If you want to earn your money back so the club isn't paying for it, okay. If you want the club to pay for it, okay. The club pay for it. You can, get your, uh, you can invite anybody you want to then to participate. Sure. Cool. Thank you. I think that's an interesting perspective of a way to, to utilize speech craft is – since everybody just got finished as of March 31st, getting their free path. If you want to jumpstart your free path, this is a great way to do it. You get a few of your people to do a speech craft. Now you can move, move forward pretty quickly, especially if you're working towards the, uh, any of the, uh, like the triple crown or anything else, that's a good way to jumpstart your club and get them moving forward. Because there's nothing in Speechcraft that I've seen that says you have to be a new Toastmaster. That's right. And not only that, now keep in mind, our volunteers can get credit for anything that they're doing to help us out too. So for instance, uh, we had, Dory gave an example of an icebreaker. She could, go, could have gotten credit for icebreaker speech then. We have yeah. five Toastmasters in each session. Well, one night, all five of them spoke. They all got credit. So anybody who evaluated them could get credit for an evaluation. The next night we had, uh, what, two speak and three evaluate, and we needed an extra speaker so that one, that third person could evaluate. Nick stepped in. He could get credit for that speech. So there's lots of ways that you can get toast, uh, you can get Pathways credit while you're helping out with speech craft. Great point. What uh, we used to do with the old program we could do here at that time was 
basically five dollars a person for the manuals. Now it's ten. So if I don't think we should try to make it a real big money maker. However, if you charge thirty dollars, ten dollars for the speech craft, and if they join club within um, first few weeks, then that twenty dollars goes towards their new member fee. And that's a great incentive. That's what we did for a lot of them that I put together or helped coordinate. You're, you're right, Paul, we've done the same thing. And I think the only additional money I guess would enter into, for instance, if you were not doing it online and you had to go to a place that you, like a hotel and you had to rent a room, that would offset yeah. some of that cost. Yeah. If you provided food, that would offset. So that's what right. Toastmasters had in mind when they set up that cost program. Uh, but you're right, if we're doing it online and those costs don't matter, then figure out how you recoup, recoup your um, $10 and then offer as an incentive that $20, we will waive the new member fee and you can join for nothing. How's that? So yeah, that's a good way to do it. Doesn't the Toastmasters, have they, what's the extension? I, I didn't see Kristen on here. I thought she might be on, but wanted to ask about them waiving the new member fees on new clubs or is that, is that just new clubs or is that? That is new clubs. Okay. So, which is, I'm hoping, I'm still hoping that if we could pull this off yet this year for this club, <laughs> get them in under that. Yeah. Right now it still applies. So this is a good time Dean, to get that club started. Yep. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah. If someone wants to jump in and not, it'd have to be close to Knoxville, but we could do a hybrid one as well, which would be kind of unique. Uh, we've got a good setup, as we talked about, was the last week? Um, yeah, with uh, Central, but also uh, the Morning Cup, we can probably use the same facility. And I just bought a Logitech uh, camera, and uh, that would be awesome. I would definitely recommend that you do it hybrid because you have a lot of people who can attend virtually that can't attend in person still, or that just are not close enough. So absolutely, uh, that's a good good suggestion, Paul. You could attract some folks from all over. And right now we can get members from anywhere. That was one of the best things with this program and this doing speechcraft at the time we have was the fact that we could get volunteers from anywhere across the district. Paul's over in the, up towards Oak Ridge. Uh, we've got uh, Sonia. Uh, she's over uh, towards she's the Virginia. 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 We've got Dory over here. I've had, uh, we, we tried to get, uh, we, we didn't get as lucky as I was hoping to get Kim or Ken Elliott on, but I was trying to get somebody covering some of these other areas. But uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, Nadia is in Division D, or no, she's in F, E or F, one of those. And I'm in Chattanooga, nope. D, so I'm in C. I see. <laughs> so she must be in E then, right? I see him yeah. shaking his head no, so, so she's in E. <laughs> so she must be in E. She, she's in E. <laughs> okay. That's what I, I couldn't remember if it was E or F, but so she's, so we've had, Volunteers come from every single area because we had Gail. Gail's over in C. So to do this face to face probably would not happen. It would not have been possible if we didn't have Zoom. If we didn't have this experience, it would not have been possible to pull these volunteers together for this event. It just <laughs> to ask them all to come over to Nashville, that's it's a big ask. That's a big ask for six weeks to travel over to Nashville to come do a speech craft for two hours. Well, and even your speech crafters, right. we've got two. From oh, it could, it wouldn't even be possible. India. We got one from India, two from Toronto. Yeah. It, it really would not have probably worked out too well. A warning from anybody who's doing this and you're inviting people from all over the world. 
We forgot to tell the guy from India that the time change. Time change. <laughs> he was late because of time he was, change. He was an hour late. He came in at the end because we didn't tell him that we were now meeting an hour earlier. So we messed him up. But keep that in mind. Don't never never do it during a time change or make sure you tell all your members. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything else? Do you know how long we have to do the original speech craft? Because I have several manuals that I want to put a local thing on, maybe. I Better get going. It ends, I believe, June 30th. I believe well, so. for, to, get credit for to get credit one, for it. Right? right. That's right. Doesn't mean you can't still use those manuals, but to get credit for it. And I don't know that you get the same credit, like the pathways, like what we showed earlier that uh, was being asked about transferring those. I don't oh, think you used to get that many. Yeah, you would get credited for the first three speeches, but we can't do it now that we're on pathways. Yeah. So even if you use the books, you might want to juggle that around a little bit so you get credit for those speeches. Yeah. Okay, Stephen, if there's nothing else, I think we'll turn it back over to you. All right, let's give a big round of applause to Don, Stacy, and Dean. This has been very educational. I'm very excited to see this new program. And I'm really excited that more than one coordinator can get credit for this at the same time. That's, that's, that's great news. And I love what you're doing with Trello. I've been using Trello for many, many, many years. And Atlassian Software also have a product called Jira, which is a much more sophisticated form of Trello, which I used at work for many, many years. So it's a great program. If you guys haven't tried Trello, give it a try. It's, it's very powerful. Steven, I just started querying the backend database of Jira. It's fun. That sounds fancy. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Yeah, good. <laughs> Stacy, what do you got for us for the good of the district? Uh, Paul has his hand up. All right. Is it a requirement to use Blue Gene or was that our choice? No, Blue Gene is what SME used. So okay. we right. with you. their software. Thank you. For the good of the district, we do have several things coming up, including the spring conference. We also have our vocal variety event that will be coming up shortly after that. In Knoxville, we will be attending a hobnob, what they call hobnob. It's a networking event that they are working on in that area. So we are lining that up as well. So we have several events coming up in the near future. So be sure and watch for emails to come out about all of those. Thank Thanks you, Stephen. Thank you, Stacy. Marty? Uh, thanks again to uh, Dean, Don, and Stacy uh, for having the zeal and boldness to be the guinea pigs for this new format. It's great that we can take advantage of these new tools in 2021. And I have confidence that if, if anyone in the district has any questions, they can contact you guys because this is now your bailiwick. Steven. Thanks, Marty. Kim, do you have anything for us this week? Oh, well, I thought you would never ask. I only have about two and a half weeks left of my term as district leadership chair, and I am still on the lookout. Hey, I saw that, Nick. <laughs> Are you making fun of me because I keep announcing it? <laughs> I, was, I was celebrating for you. I'm empathetically celebrating. Oh. Okay. Um, so yeah, I have a few more spots that I'm looking for area directors for if you are interested in serving as an area director. I'm also looking for a finance manager, somebody that's good with numbers and likes to do budgets. Please let me know. If you don't get with me before April 24th, then I will send you over to the district director elect after that and he or she will fill those spots. So please let me know if you're interested. All right, thanks, Kim. Thanks for everything you're doing. Get those positions filled, it's awesome stuff. All right, next week, April 12th, I will be doing a presentation on the Distinguished Club Plan and the Club Success Plan. The following week on April 19th, I'm gonna, going to lead a discussion on club open houses. April 26th, Tanya Latham will be doing a session on developing your club marketing plan. 
Then on May 3rd, Teresa Dunbar will be doing a session on fractured table topics. So we'll leave that for now. Anybody else have anything for the good of the district? I just put in the chat, this is Dory. Harvard View officers went back to in-person last Saturday and we are going to, we are starting to open it up to members that want to be in person trying to keep a minimum so that we can all you know stay the six feet apart and but we technically are now officially hybrid congratulations please Thank uh you. keep us up to date on how well that's going and any challenges or successes you're having there it's good news well nick of course of course is a main tech person and they have been working extremely hard to make sure that it works he went in early on saturday and stayed late to try and get the right angles and everything we are going to be making this um as sorry i'm also doing a, a art history paper at the same time uh, they're working very hard our tech committee to make this a an experience for those that are on Zoom as well as in person to where you can see everything. All right, excellent, good news. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you again next week. We will get the recording of this session out on the YouTube channel as soon as we can. Thanks for being here.